everyone. Today we are going to learn about similarity transformations. Before we start, we need to take a step back and talk about the word similar. We've used this in previous chapters, but um, again, this is going to be an important word in this section. Similar polygons mean that all of the corresponding angles are congruent, but the corresponding sides have the same scale factor or their proportionals, another way that we could say it. So again, just take note of that. Um, and again, it's something good to know for the final as well. So in our similarity transformations, we're not doing anything new. It's just that we're taking note that our final image is going to be similar to what we started with. So we're going to apply this transformation right here, and we always have some type of dilation included when we do a similarity transformation. So I've graphed this triangle, D-O-G. Okay, that was weird, sorry. And after doing the reflection over the y-axis, my new coordinates would be here, listed in red, something that I haven't really pointed out in the other videos is that whenever we do a reflection, the coordinates stay exactly the same. So look at the pattern here. But we just take of the, the signs of the new quadrant that we are reflecting to. So if we reflect over the y-axis, we would end up right here. And the signs in this quadrant are negative positive. So these coordinates are the same, just all negative positive. So, and remember, we always do in a composition what is listed last first. So I did this. Now I need to go over here and do a dilation. And remember that this D stands for dilation, and this 2 tells me the scale factor. So I need to take all of these coordinates and multiply them by 2. So if I multiply all of these by 2, these are my new coordinates. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, or 2 times 0 is 0. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, 4 times 2 is 8, and then so on. So if I were to take these over to my graph and graph my new coordinates, this would be my new image. And again, it's, it's, we're doing exactly what we've been doing. The only thing to take note of is that this triangle that we started with is similar to what we ended up with. All of the angles are congruent, so D would be congruent to D prime, and O is congruent to O prime, and then the corresponding sides all have the same scale factor, which of course we know is 2. Let's do one more just to make sure we've got it down. So in this one, uh, the transformation I'm going to apply is I'm going to do a rotation of 180 degrees and then a dilation of 2. So I have graphed this triangle, C-A-T. Okay, sorry, that was even weirder. And I'm going to do a rotation, and then these would be my new coordinates. So remember that if we do a 180-degree rotation, these coordinates stay the same. We just take the sign of the new quadrant. So if we take this and rotate it 180 degrees, we're going to end up in this quadrant right here. And this would be my new triangle. So I have done this one. And remember, again, whatever is listed last, we do first. And now I'm going to do a dilation of 2. And when I do a dilation of 2, then uh, this is my scale factor. And I need to multiply every coordinate by 2. We already talked about that in the last slide, so I don't want to bore you. But again, I've just taken every one of these, every x and y, and multiplied them by 2. And this gives me my new coordinates. And then if I go over here and graph these, this would be my new triangle. So again, the only thing to note is that this triangle here is similar to this, meaning they all of the corresponding angles are congruent and the corresponding sides have the same scale factor, which is 2. I'll see you guys in class.